Less than an hour ago, we heard from the police who have identified the man thought to be the origami killer. Ethan origami. Mars, father of the kidnapped victim, Sean Mars, is on the run and should be considered armed and dangerous. A police manhunt is now underway, and they hope that they will soon be able to announce the apprehension of this dangerous lunatic. I brought some food. I didn't know what you like, so I brought some of everything. I, I hope that's okay. Why are you helping me, Madison? You know nothing about me. You could have been killed. I don't know. I guess it just seemed like the right thing to do at the time. You needed help. I helped you. You're all over the news reports, Ethan. Every cop in the country will be hunting you. They say you're the origami killer. Is it true? Are you the killer, Ethan? Uh, confide. Just say, I don't know. I... I sometimes have these blackouts. Times where I don't know what I'm doing. As if I'm... someone completely different. The only thing I remember afterwards... is the bodies. The bodies in the water. Why are you hurt, Ethan? Why were you in that apartment? I think my other self is testing me, testing my love for Sean. He wants to know if I love my son enough to save him. That means there's some part of me that knows where Sean is. But the only way to find him is to go through these trials. Why can't you tell that to the police? And tell them what? That I'm a schizophrenic who drowns his victims and has kidnapped his own son? They'd never let me go, and I have to stay free to save Sean. I have no choice. I'm his only chance. When Sean is out of danger, I'll turn myself in, but not until then. You can't keep going like this. You're destroying yourself, Ethan. Finding Sean is the only thing that matters. There has to be another way. You don't understand. Time is running out. Sean will be dead in a few hours. I have no choice! Please, Madison. Leave. Forget everything that's happened. There is nothing more you can do for me. If you want to help me, leave. Shut up, dude. Leave me to do this on my own. Is she actually going to do it? All right. I was waiting for her to come back in, just for, like, dramatic tension. <sighs> time for number four. I don't have much time. I've got to find my son before it's too late. I'll find you, Sean. I swear I'll find you. So we're, uh... Ethan's committing himself to the idea that he's the origami the killer. Box. I have to open another origami figure. And then he just has, like, a little bit of a split personality. And who knows, maybe that turned out to be true, and if it is... Jesus Christ, Ethan, you've got some problems. You shouldn't have bought that balloon, man.
The real plot twist will be if we aren't the origami killer. Are you prepared to kill someone to save your son? Brad Silver. Kill him, send a picture, get your reward. Jesus. Am I willing to kill someone to save him? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Meanwhile, at Norman Jaden from the FBI, who we haven't been for a while. Well, no, that's a lie. I guess we were him with Brad, but it didn't really feel like we were in control of that situation. Because Brad's just an asshole. Or Brady? God, I don't even remember exactly. I can handle it, man. I can handle these presses. More than a fucking piano, that's for sure. Your vodka, sir. Thanks. You look preoccupied. If you don't mind my saying so. Problems with the investigation? Blake is convinced that Mars is the killer. Not you. I thought there was some evidence to that effect. That's true. But it just doesn't make sense. His psychological profile doesn't fit. Neither does the geolocalization. I can't see this father drowning eight victims before kidnapping his own kid. Mars is not the origami killer. I'd stake my life on it. Then who is? I haven't the faintest fucking idea. Maybe you should review the evidence in your possession. That's just what I was thinking of doing. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in you know what. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. I'm trying to keep a handle on it, but that's difficult. It gets more and more difficult. It'll end up killing you if you're not careful. That would be most unfortunate, sir. It would be incredibly unfortunate if you know what killed you. What the hell is you know what? Is it the drugs or is it the fucking virtual reality or alternate reality glasses? I don't know. Meanwhile, back on Mars, well, a dusty planet. Oh, uh, we have so many things to go through here. All right. What kind of environment do I want to be in now? I want to be all the way up in the air. I think I'll take underwater. Why not? This time we'll be in both frontiers. All right, let's look at the files that we currently have. Well, I guess I should have looked at clues first. I don't really think we would have gotten that much since the last time we used this, honestly. Victims haven't changed. Modus operandi, we can look at that. Open. Not much time left. Gotta find something fast if I wanna save the kid. Jesus, buddy. <sighs> A clue. Anything. Oh, I'm sure it's staring me in the face. Perhaps, sir, you should have another look at your clues. Perhaps, sir, you should have another look at your clues. 
I am looking at- well, these are files. Fine, let's look at our clues. Well, well. Looks like there's something new. The video recording from near the park on the afternoon Sean Mars disappeared. I doubt there's anything on it, but you never know. Mm, okay. What do we have? Analyze. A Chevrolet model corresponding to the tire prints passed at 1602 heading for the park. When in the opposite direction at 1637, that could fit the time that Sean Mars disappeared. Could it be the killer's car? I want to look at it more in detail. Uh, maybe we can't see the driver's face. The car was stolen. Let's see. A certain Jackson Neville was suspected of stealing it. But the charges were dropped. Not enough evidence. Stolen in 2005? Holy shit. That has been gone for a while. If that's true, then, uh... Really can't imagine... Ethan owning that car. Jackson Neville, a.k.a. Mad Jack. Involved in several cases of buying and selling stolen vehicles. Considered to be very dangerous. This guy might have provided the killer with a car. It's a pretty slim lead, but it's all I have right now. Oh my god, we weren't actually in a bar? Uh-oh. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge. Very dangerous. Shit, it's... it's coming. Tryptocaine. The tube is on the bedside table. All I need is to take some, and the pain will go away. Look, I buddy. This. this is gonna kill me. Yeah. I know I can resist. I just need to stay in control and, and do something until it goes away. Look, you could, you could, uh, you could drink. Yeah, that's much better than taking the drugs. Let's go wash up our face a little bit, huh? Whoa, I didn't mean, I didn't say headbutt. I'm in withdrawal. <laughs> We're just gonna sit here and beat our face to things. I wish I hadn't missed that prompt, but I thought it was like an up. I need to get rid of it. It's the only way. I'm going to flush it down the toilet. I'm gonna flush it down the toilet. I need to get a grip. Give it some time to pass. Throw it! It would be good if I stopped having all these moments of like, oh, should I take it or not? I don't want to take it! Throw it down the goddamn toilet! There. I don't know what the fuck's going on there. We, we, I hope we find out exactly what the tryptocaine is. Because what if it is actually something that can be really helpful for him? Brings him back down to reality. I love that. It's trying to take screenshots for when I get the achievements for passing by certain chapters. But it doesn't want to like take the screenshot during loading screens. So it just fails. <laughs>
What was that meeting with Charles Kramer at the golf club really about? Why is he so worried about me investigating his son? His son's probably got some other fucking problem going on. I was crazy to let her come with me. She's trying to help out, but she just gets in the way. I'll have to talk to her later. Manfred! Manfred! Anybody home? Well, I guess this is an obvious bet. All right, so uh, we know that this the envelope was sent with someone using a typewriter. Let's go to the uh, typewriter store. Hey, have you sold anything to anybody who might be a killer? You know, killed kids, drowned them inside of little wells over the course of like six or seven days like a truly, absolutely despicable person? Hi there, Manfred. Who is it? Scott. Scott Shelby. Do you remember me? Scott? This is Scott! Oh, yes, yeah, of course! Well, good to see you. How long has it been? Oh, about ten years, I guess. Oh, at my age, time means nothing anymore. I, I repair clocks, but I try to forget about time. How about you? Are you still with the police? Oh, no, I quit. I'm a private investigator now. Uh, this is Lauren. She's a, she's a friend. Hello. Oh, hello, young lady. Well, this, this calls for a celebration. I've just the thing. Wait there. I, I'm sure I, I saw a bottle of scotch around here somewhere. <laughs> okay, old man. Nice to see Manfred again. Just like old times. Uh oh. Manfred, you've got a phone. A favor, would you, Scott? Tell them to call back this afternoon. Sure. sure. It's gonna be implications, Hello? man. Yeah, this is Manfred. He's not available right now. Could you call back later this afternoon? Thanks. Damn, I was hoping it'd be like a phone call going, Old man, where's my damn typewriter? I need to type out another letter about the kids. I've got another victim lined up. Just you wait. Well, to old friends. Old friends. Up. I'd like you to have a look at an envelope. I thought maybe you could tell me about the typewriter that was used to type the address on it. Well, let's have a look. Now, could you pass me the uh, magnifying glass from behind the counter? Oh, sure, please? I'll get it. My eyes are beginning to fail me. That's all right, old man. I got your back. Uh oh. Wait, 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 look, there's a letter there. We could look at the letter there, but the camera angle won't let me see it. It could just be a normal letter, but still, what if this old guy is the origami killer? Nah. Thanks. Well, let's see what this envelope has to say for itself. The Royal Five. And yes, the shape of the T's and the F's is typical of that model. Produced between 1907 and 1924. No doubt about it. It's a Royal Five. Uh, are they rare? These typewriters, are they rare? No, no, they're fairly common. Shit. I'd say many folks have one gathering dust in an attic or in their cellar. Are there many places around that could prepare one of these? I bought the company's entire stock as spare parts for a song in 64. Uh, well, they were going to take them to the dumpster, so I got the lot. 
You know, anybody around here who has one that actually works has been to see me at one time or another. Do you keep a record of all your clients? Oh, yes, indeed. Well, at least the ones who pay. <laughs> Any chance I could get a peek at that? Well, yes, of course. I keep my account books in the office. Uh, if you're not in a hurry, I have a list of all the clients who ever bought a Royal Five or, or had one repaired. Yeah, that would really help us out. Hmm. Delighted to help. Give me two minutes, and I'll be right back with the list. Thanks, Manfred. As long as you don't actually, like, end up destroying the list. You think the killer's been here? If he has a 1920s typewriter, he may have needed Manfred's services to get it fixed. We'll know when we get the list. <laughs> 